Okay, welcome to my 2018 beauty favorites video. Had I waited any longer, it would have been my 2019 favorites video. I know, I know. You're terrible, Muriel. I hope that you are still keen to watch this video because I think I have some real winners here. Some real holy grail products and some of them might be no brainers, you've seen them in a trillion tutorials before, but I think there is going to be some surprises in here too. Products that I've been loving for years and I just haven't had the chance to rave about them yet. Now is the time. Let's do this. I'm going to put timestamps in the description box in case you want to fast forward to something in particular, but let's start with some skincare. This is the Dr. Spiller Fresh and Fruit Moisturizing Mask. So I ran out recently and I was without it for about a week and I freaked out <laughs> and my skin freaked out and that just solidified in my mind that I cannot be without this stuff. Hopefully you can see I'm actually running out of it again, I go through this stuff like water. So it's a hydrating jelly formulated with very, very gentle enzymes. So it does exfoliate a little bit as well. I'll apply a really generous layer all over my face and neck um, and wear it overnight, sort of a few days a week. And I kid you not, my skin has never looked this good, at least in my adult lifetime. I feel like it's almost bad luck to say that out aloud but it's true. My pores look tighter. Um, I haven't got any flakiness or congestion under the skin bumps. I haven't suffered with dermatitis. Um, I don't even really get that hormonal spot at that time of the month anymore. So touch wood. It's actually bizarre how stable my skin has been. Touch wood. Touch wood. This is quite the cult product. The Bite Beauty Agave Lip Mask. I like that it's in a tube as opposed to a pot. Um, it just feels that little bit more hygienic. Look, I'll be honest, I have a bit of an anxious tick where I just bite and touch my lips all day long. So they're always gonna be in crap condition. I've just, I've just accepted that. You know, unless I would actually <laughs> address the underlying anxiety, but that could take years. So until then, Bite Beauty Agave Lip Mask, really, really good for rugged lips. You guys know I also like the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. They're on par. The Face Halo. This is a microfiber round thingy my bobby, uh, and it's actually designed to remove makeup. So you dampen the, the cloth and then wipe over your face to remove makeup. I am pretty religious with my um, micellar water, so I don't use it for that purpose. I love to use the face halo like after a personal training session when I feel really gross. Uh, or if I'm, if I'm wanting to remove a particularly stubborn mud mask, they're the best for that as well. Use them every week. All right, let's move on to makeup uh, primer. So this is one that I've spoken about a trillion times before, so I'm gonna be brief. The Dermalogica Skin Perfect SPF 30 Primer. This is the SPF for people that hate sunscreen. Right, if you are currently religiously using a Japanese sunscreen with a PA++++ factor, you are covered. Um, but I bet any money that there are a ton of you out there who are not wearing SPF because it's just not cosmetically elegant. And this slots right into your routine where you would put your primer. Just make sure that you're applying it liberally and all over the face. I also like that um, the SPF is a physical blocker. It's not a chemical sunscreen, so I've never once being irritated from this product, love it. The Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. If you recall, the marketing for this product, the marketing material was super sexy and mysterious and vague. And it's like, okay, cool, 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 cool. What is it? So simply put, I think it is best described as a liquid highlight with the faintest amount of coverage, just a touch. So you can use it uh, underneath your foundation, mixed in with your foundation, over your foundation, you can use it on bare skin. It's a liquid highlight, dude. It's not rocket science. All that said, this is the most angelic, glossy, polished, smooth, glorious highlight that there is. It was love at first sight. Now I have put this into the primer category because I use it on the high points of my face before I apply my foundation and it just gives this gorgeous, glossy, you get the idea. <laughs> it's good stuff. It comes in multiple shades, many shades, uh, and it never creates texture or bunches or cracks on the skin. I just can't say enough good things. Let's move on to foundations. I have here this one has a funny name. The My Armani To Go Essence In Foundation Cushion SPF 23. 
I've been wearing this every day for I'd say about six months, maybe even more. I've really come to appreciate and enjoy cushion foundations because they're so convenient, so convenient. This is like real life makeup. Uh, I, I, I always underestimate the amount of time that it's gonna take me to get ready. And so invariably, I am always doing my makeup in the back of an Uber. This puff I think is quite special. It's angular. And so it's really easy to get into the nooks and crannies. Oftentimes I don't even apply under eye concealer. I just go underneath the eyes with this foundation. Uh, it's got a nice satin finish, nice medium coverage, middle of the road foundation. But I think the reason that this has become such a go-to for me is because the shade four is a decent color match. I got a decent color match without mixing you guys. This, I mean, it's a moment. Other foundations that got non-stop wear from me in 2018 were actually mentioned in previous yearly favorites. So the YSL Fusion Ink Cushion, which I mentioned in my 2017 favorites, the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation, which was also mentioned in my 2017 favorites video. And then also, oh, I love this stuff. I'm so sad that this brand left Australia. The Makeup Store Sculpt Excellence Foundation, which I mentioned in my 2016 Beauty Favorites video. So I'm gonna link all the previous yearly favorites in the description in case you wanna do a little bit of a, bit of a marathon after this video. Let us talk about some eye makeup products. Um, now I have the NARS Tinted Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. I use the shade Light. This is the product that I've been searching for for years. It has just enough tint to mute the veininess and the redness on my eyelids, but it's not got so much coverage that it blanks out my eyelid and it doesn't look dry or crepey and it sits really beautifully under eyeshadow. Like if this is a very careful equilibrium to pin and Nas did it. There were so many eyeshadows that got me super excited in 2018. So uh, the Natasha Denona Crystal Top Coats, I adore these, I'm wearing them on the lid today, like glossy, glossy, scattered, glitter, goodness, love. Uh, also the Marc Jacobs sequins, you guys, these blew my mind. I have a video um, featuring all the different shades. Uh, also the uh, Charlotte Tilbury Stars In Your Eyes palette. I wore this for about four months straight. Uh, really golden goodness, fabulous formula. Also the Huda Beauty uh, Obsessions palettes. They come in a whole bunch of different color stories. This purple one, every time I look at it, I just get so excited so inspired. <laughs> it would be negligent of me not to mention my lash extensions because I had lash extensions for a pretty good portion of 2018. They're like my guiltiest pleasure. I want them all the time. I think nowadays you see a lot of lash extensions that are very dramatic. Uh, so very long, very uniform with a strong curl. Um, and I prefer a little bit more of a wispy lash. Uh, something that could potentially maybe pass off as natural. So I go to Amy Jeans, she has locations around Australia and they do very tasteful, wispy, natural lashes. That's like their forte, very good. Benefit, going solo individual lashes. This is like the product that I didn't know that I needed and now that I've discovered it, I must buy it in bulk. Just warning, my neurotic is about to show. So I've always had this, this irksome thing, whether I'm wearing individual lashes or a strip lash, there's always this region in the innermost portion of the eye where I can see a step from the natural lash to the false lash. And I've always thought that that could be better blended. And then I discovered these lashes, They're, they are just so short and also very, very delicate. They're the perfect blending lash. So I pop on a few, in the, the innermost portion of the eye where the, the, the fake and the natural lashes meet and now it's a perfectly seamless blend. I know, I, as I say it, I know how crazy it sounds, but I take photos on a macro lens. That lens sees everything. Let's talk about brows, shall we? I have here the Holika Holika Wonder Drawing Skinny Eyebrow. Uh, and I've been using this product for years and years and I just, I feel like it needs its minute of fame. So it's a, a fine tip brow pencil. The formula is awesome, but the thing I like most about this product is the color. It's very, very ashy. I'm wearing it in my brows now. So if ever you have problems with uh, brow colors looking reddish or orangish in your brow, th there's just no chance. 
this thing is grey AF. Also, the Benefit 24-hour brow setter, clear brow gel. So this is not going to give you as much texture and, and hold as something like soap, right? But again, I'm not gonna be in the back of an Uber with my bar of soap brushing my hairs up. I feel like that's just not very practical for my lifestyle. So I pop in um, one of these bad boys into my handbag and I would say it has probably the best hold of any traditional convenient brow gel that I've encountered. It's really good stuff. Let's move on to bronzers and blushes. So 2018, I, I started seeing a pattern. I was really gravitating towards sheerer formulations. For me, it was like the sheerer, the better. So on that note, we have the Too Faced Sweetie Pie Bronzer. And this stuff is so sheer. I could uh, apply this over a tacky foundation with a dense brush and accidentally over apply and it still wouldn't go patchy because it's so foolproof and so sheer. It has a, a very slight, slight luminosity to the formula, but it's nothing glittery or OTT. Um, the only caveat with this product is if you're much cheaper than me, I just don't think that this is going to translate as anything on your skin. And then for blush, I have the Too Faced Sweethearts blush. I love this. I tend to gravitate more towards these peachy and coral tones because heavens knows I already have enough pink in my skin. Give me a color that my, my skin doesn't produce naturally. So I love this. It does have a sheer formula and a decent dose of luminosity, but not nearly as much as my next pick. This is the MAC Fairly Precious Extra Dimension Blush. You guys, this is a joke. This, pro this product is a freaking joke. This is like half blush, half highlight. I've, I've really come to enjoy that look, that, like a little highlight on the, on the apple of the cheek so that when you smile, you just get a bit of extra bounce. I think it's cute. Look at that. Look at that shine. Oh, fabulous. Perhaps my taste is questionable, but especially now that my skin is in pretty good shape, I feel like I can pull it off. If you have uh, large pores, peach fuzz, uh, congestion, anything, any texture on your cheeks that you don't want to draw attention to, this is a safe skip. Let's move on to highlight, one of my favorite topics of discussion. Uh, first, I have the Hourglass Vanish Stick highlight. So when these were first released, they, they got some mixed reviews and that really perplexes me uh, because to me, this is such a reliable product. I've tested it on so many people and it always looks lovely. So this is not your megawatt see it from space kind of highlight. It's more of a satiny sort of soft focus glow. Uh, it's got a good amount of, of silicon in it, so it really blends effortlessly and meshes into the surrounding foundation. It doesn't pick up too much on, on texture. It's a really tasteful, classy highlight. Great for daytime work, uh, if you just have subtle highlight preferences. On the other side of the spectrum, we have the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Beauty Light Wand. So this is your megawatt, hyper glossy, see it from space kind of highlight. From my first application, I was absolutely infatuated. I think the special thing about this, because there's so many really intense beaming highlights on the market, but the special thing about this one is even when you look closely, it's, it's not textured or frosty or glittery. It is a genuine, glossy, polished skin, gorgeous and juicy highlight. Does this sound familiar? It's actually a very similar product to the Hollywood Flawless Filter, both from the same line. I would say that the, the Beauty Light one is, is more impactful this is like the light version. Uh, this one comes in multiple shades and this one only comes in one, um, which is kind of like a rose gold color. You don't need both unless you're crazy like me, in which case, welcome to the club. I have an everyday lip and I have a party lip. So my everyday lip combo, this combo lives in my handbag. I have Boots Number no. 7 Lip Liner in Nude. This is um, a lighter color than most of my nude lip liners and it's also a creamier formula. So it's really great just all over the lips as though, as though it were a lipstick. And then I like to top that off with the YSL uh, Vinyl Cream in 404, which is sort of like a peachy, peachy nude color. I really enjoy the formula of these YSL 
uh, glosses because they never get stringy in between your mouth. That's like a pet peeve of mine. So uh, that's the combo that I throw on regardless of what I'm wearing, what eye makeup, it always goes. I know, it's a peachy nude. I'm basic like that. My less basic party lip is the iconic MAC Ruby Woo. Oh, Ruby Woo, you are divine. This is the best red lipstick ever. Especially when I had my lash extensions, I was really keen on this kind of gorgeous, glossy skin, bare eye and matte red lip. Now I know Ruby Woo is, is super dry. This is a notoriously dry formula, but I can kind of tolerate that because if Ruby Woo were creamier, then it would transfer and smudge and get on your teeth. And Ruby Woo never does any of those things. She wouldn't dare. So yeah, I don't know. I can kind of tolerate the dry formula because it's part of the package. This is interesting. I'm actually gonna talk about hair products in this video. I don't think I've done this in previous videos, but new year, new me. I have the Orbe Super Shine Light Moisturizing Cream. So I'm very rarely, uh, you know, faithful to my, to my hair care products. I kind of just use whatever's around. But since I discovered this product, I have not used anything else. So it's a light cream, as the name would suggest. I run it through my, my lengths and my ends uh, before I blow dry. And it's light enough that it doesn't weigh down my fine long hair, but it's hydrating enough to tame any frizzies and really give me that, that sleek, shiny effect. Hair care is not like fun for me to buy and it pains me to spend this kind of money on hair care. But let's be fair, I've, used, I've been using this product multiple times a week for a whole year and I'm still not even halfway through. It's like the never ending bottle. And then a recent discovery, oh, life changing. The Aqui, Aquis, Aqui? The Aqui Turban. You know, those of you with really, really long manes will feel me when I say that I've got to carefully plan my hair washing days. Like if I want to go out on a Saturday night, then I've got to think, okay, I'll wash my hair on the Friday night so that it has adequate time to dry. I'll give it a quick whiz with a hair dryer on the Saturday morning. I need to put these shoes in my planner, right? I couldn't just wash my hair and go out the same day. Like that's crazy talk. Or it was until I discovered um, these turbans, they cut my drying time in half and I can feel that they're so much gentler on my hair and that there's less, less breakage going on. I'm sure that a lot of brands do them, um, but these are the ones that I have. I have two different colors and they're really sturdy. The button never comes off. Everything works as it should. I love it. Really quick shout out. I know I've mentioned that before, but I have to say it again because it's my yearly favorites, silk pillow slips. I, I was very skeptical of the silk pillow slip thing, but I can genuinely feel a difference in my skin. I don't wake up with all these like creases and lines all over my face. I can feel that it's more gentle with my hair. I am a believer. I wanna quickly touch, very quickly touch on some makeup brushes. These are not necessarily new to my collection, but I have a newfound appreciation for each of these brushes. So the Ray Morris Pro Powder. Um, this is designed for, uh, application of face powder, but I actually have been using this most frequently for my bronzer. It just gives like a really large and diffuse application of bronzer so that you can't see where that bronzer begins or where it ends. It's really seamless. And every time I use this brush, without a doubt, someone will say, what's that bronzer brush? Now you know. Uh, a moment of appreciation for all of the Smith Cosmetics detail brushes. So some of these are actually listed under lip brushes on their website, but I use pretty much all of them for eyes. And just such, such an incredible array of very clever shapes, um, really small push brushes and tiny angle brushes and smudgy liner brushes, and they wash really well, they never fray. Bravo, Smith. The Suku Eyeshadow L. So this is a large crease brush, great for that purpose. I used to use it for really chiseling out the contour just in the very hollow of the cheekbone. But my favorite way to use this nowadays, and you have seen it in some of my tutorials, is for precision powdering. Tap, tap under the eyes, around the nose, maybe a little bit on the chin to otherwise preserve that gorgeous, dewy, glowy skin. And this brush is legitimately, it's like silk. Um, so it's just so incredibly soft and it will never disrupt any of the concealing or foundation that you have underneath. 
I have two standout fragrances. The first is Frappin Isle of Man. Um, and I was wearing this, I wore it every day for months and months and then one day realized, oh my gosh, I am totally going through this and I now need to savor what I have left. This is actually a men's fragrance and is best described as a salty citrus. It's clean and not too sweet and refreshing. It, it's aquatic, it's sexy. I love it on men, I love it on women. This stuff's bomb. And my second fragrance is one that every time I wear it, someone will ask me, what are you wearing because I need to buy it? It's Tom Ford Noir Parfum. And this to me is a super sexy fragrance. It's like going out, little black dress, date night kind of fragrance. And I looked it up and they describe it as, um, I think they call it a floriental. So it's an oriental floral fragrance, like a spicy floral. But I, 100%, without a doubt, I get some sort of, almost like a bitter chocolate note, or maybe like a coffee ground kind of note. It's a stunner. I think that is the end of this video. <laughs> um, I have a feeling it was a long one. I just wanted to say a massive thank you to everyone who supported me in 2018. Um, and beyond and prior, um, I, I, I really appreciate how valuable your time is. Um, so if you, if you choose to spend any of that time watching my content, um, leaving comments on my, on my videos, chatting to me, I have so much appreciation um, and I'm so grateful um, that you come to spend some time with me. I really hope that you guys are having a wonderful day. Come say hello to me on Instagram, at Kareem and if you wanna chat more. I also do giveaways there. Also PR unboxings in my Instagram stories. Yeah, it's a fun time. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I think I already said that. I'll speak to you very soon. Bye.